13 signs you're having sex with a narcissist. This is going to be good. You ready? Let's do it. Hey friends, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and I run a powerful eight week transformational coaching program called the Freedom Class, specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. If that's of interest to you, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. So let's dive into the 13 signs you're having sex with a narcissist. Number one, narcissists are highly seductive, initially anyway. People who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism tend to use seduction as their primary means of connecting because they're fundamentally incapable of bonding in a real and healthy way. So instead of working to foster healthy love and intimacy, something they know absolutely nothing about, Instead, it'll be all about seducing you and the challenge of the conquest. And let's be honest, a narcissist can be incredibly seductive, as well as charismatic and charming when motivated. And they'll use their seductive charm and charisma to manipulate you into satisfying their own sexual needs, desires, and fantasies. In the early stages of a relationship, they'll likely shower you with attention, gifts, praise, and affection in order to reel you in only for you to realize down the track that the narcissist really only cares about themselves and their own needs. And in truth, cares very little about you. Number two, they move too fast. Narcissists often want to move real fast, too fast, and they'll get mad when you don't or won't go at their pace. When you say no, not now or not yet, it threatens their fragile false persona and overinflated ego. Your desire to go at a pace that's healthy, safe, and comfortable for you will be perceived as a form of rejection. And although they may try to hide it, if you're paying attention and you're not deluding yourself into being flattered by all the nonsense, you'll see the emotional immaturity and the extent to which they are so easily slighted and angered when they aren't getting their way, when they can't control you and the pace of the relationship. Whatever you do, do not ignore that red flag. Number three, they're focused entirely on the physical. That's right. Another sign you're having sex with a narcissist is you'll notice that they'll be focused entirely on physical performance during sex with zero interest in actual emotional connection, true intimacy, vulnerability, or any real tenderness. What's interesting is that the narcissist will expect their partner to be physically and aesthetically perfect, even when the narcissists themselves are far from perfect in this regard. And they'll have little tolerance for any imperfection in physical appearance or performance for that matter. And who decides what these standards of perfection are? Well, the narcissist does, of course. And if you're with them for any length of time, you'll notice that the narcissist's standards of perfection will be a constant moving target. No matter how hard you try, no matter how lean, fit, or stunning you may be, it will never be good enough for the narcissist. Number four, they enjoy dominance and control. The thing is, when it comes to sex with a narcissist, they're in charge. They don't just like to be in control, they need to be in control. And they'll use the pretense of love and connection, as well as sex, to manipulate, dominate, and control others, including how they are perceived by others. And they literally get a sick kick from either giving or withholding sex, attention, and affection for no other reason than to manufacture and maintain a sense of dominance, power, and control over you. Number five, they're selfish and self-centered to the extreme. If you hear nothing else, hear this. 
The narcissist is only ever concerned with themselves, their wants, desires, fetishes, and fantasies. They are takers, not givers. Unless, of course, the giving benefits them and their ego somehow. Due to their lack of empathy and extreme self-absorption, sex with a narcissist will be all about meeting their needs. So you can count on the fact that your sex life will forever and always be centered around their desires, not yours. They'll be fixated on their own fantasies without ever so much as asking you about your preferences or your comfort for that matter. And again, they are very easily slighted. So any perceived criticism, even a hint of rejection, will be met with childish, if not rageful, emotional outbursts and a barrage of emotional and verbal abuse. Because the narcissist relies on their sexual performance and escapades to prop up their false sense of self, when you refuse to give in to their sexual demands, they are only going to lash out one way or another. You will be punished. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you've experienced any of these signs. And if so, how'd you handle it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you're struggling with narcissistic abuse in any area of your life, you're likely an excellent candidate for my eight week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. If that's of interest to you, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one on one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Next, number six, they're highly critical. A narcissist has a need to be or feel superior to others in order to compensate for their own deeply buried fear, guilt, shame, insecurity, and feelings of inadequacy. So when it comes to sex with a narcissist, they'll criticize you and your performance in bed in an attempt to make you feel inferior and gain greater control over you. For example, they may tell you that your performance didn't measure up and that you need to try harder to please them the next time. Now, this of course is important to them because part of what actually turns the narcissist on is being able to exert dominance over their partners, especially during sex. And when this doesn't work, they'll move on to sign number seven. They'll play amateur psychoanalyst. If criticizing and shaming you doesn't have the desired effect, and in particular, if they receive any pushback from you, they'll pull the amateur psychoanalyst routine where they'll start using your disclosures as ammunition against you. As proof positive that you're the one with the issue, of course, not them. Now, the moment you resist, and they can't succeed in manipulating, dominating, and controlling you through toxic shame and criticism, they'll begin to point to anything they're aware of, especially having to do with your previous relationships, that might cast you in a negative light. They'll use anything they can from your past, or your present for that matter, pointing out any trauma or family dysfunction even any difficulties you may have had within your friendships, sure to highlight all of your so-called issues and shortcomings so they can build the case making you the problem, not only in the bedroom, but in the relationship in general. And if you haven't done your own personal healing and recovery work, you might actually fall for this nonsense and insanity. So please do your work so you aren't so susceptible to this brand of emotional manipulation and psychological abuse. And if you need help with that, be sure to check out the links in the description below this video. My team and I are here to help and we're happy to help you. Number eight, they'll use withholding to punish you. Along with emotional immaturity and irrational outbursts, when they don't get their way or get what they want when they want it, narcissists will use withholding behavior as a means of punishing you. For what exactly? Well, who knows, but you'll know it's happening because the rejection will likely cut deep. It's real and it's painful. And that's the point. And on that note, they'll also have a tendency to ignore you after sex. Remember, a narcissist uses sex as a means of validation, validating their false persona, their overinflated ego, 
and their false sense of superiority, control, and dominance. If you're cooperative enough, you fulfilled their addictive, compulsive need for admiration and attention, well, after sex, they don't need you anymore. Their needs have been met. They're satisfied. So for now anyway, they don't need you. They don't need anything from you. So there's no need to pay any attention to you as far as they're concerned. Ignoring you is very much how the narcissist withholds intimacy. Since the sex is only about the ego gratification the narcissist receives, instead of it being about genuinely intimate and emotional connection, like it would be between two relatively normal and healthy people. The truth is, narcissists are fundamentally, constitutionally incapable of true intimacy, which is one primary reason why relationships with these people are so dissatisfying, confusing, frustrating, and painful. Number nine, narcissists have no boundaries, which manifests in a colossal lack of respect. In addition to being incapable of true intimacy and establishing a healthy, loving connection, narcissists are also absolutely incapable of respecting you, your privacy, and the sanctity of your relationship. Telling others intimate details about your sex life is par for the course when you're involved with a destructive narcissist. And they'll go so far as to make up elaborate, perverted, even kinky stories lying outright about you and what actually went on in the bedroom. And more often than not, this is purely classic narcissistic attention-seeking behavior. But they'll also do this for no other reason than the sheer satisfaction of making themselves look and feel good, while simultaneously titillating their audience and making themselves seem far more virile than they actually are, when in reality, once the high of the initial seduction phase has worn off, more often than not, narcissists are a complete letdown and utter disappointment in the sack. In addition, if they can make you look or sound bad, if they can assassinate your character and destroy your reputation in the process through their storytelling, well, total bonus for the narcissist. In their mind, now they have leverage on you. And it's important to realize that anyone who A, listens to the nonsense, and B, believes it, never mind actually goes so far as to repeat it, is just as sick and is cut from the exact same cloth as the destructive narcissist you're dealing with. So ask yourself, why are they in such a hurry to believe the nonsense? As far as I'm concerned, their opinions should not matter at all. Let them believe the stories. You know who you are, let that be enough. Number 10 is infidelity. Now, you know you're dealing with a destructive narcissist when they feel entitled to cheat, which they often do. And let's be honest, you have to be pretty empathy impaired, if not lacking in conscience entirely, to be able to pull this off, considering the lying, deceiving, and manipulation involved. People with a conscience can't easily go home, wash it off, look their significant other in the face, and pretend they're someone they're not. But narcissists can. And like I said earlier, narcissists have a high need for validation and affirmation, which they try to satisfy through sex. This means that a narcissistic partner will be likely to stray from the relationship repeatedly in order to seek out validation and approval from other sexual partners. And don't get me wrong, not all narcissists cheat for sure, but in my view and experience, the majority do. And they do so because he or she doesn't feel guilt, shame, or any remorse as a result of inflicting this particular brand of betrayal trauma on those they supposedly care for. In fact, they'll often go so far as to blame their partner for the infidelity, instead of taking responsibility for the very real pain they've caused. And speaking of their twisted sense of entitlement, sign number 11. In their mind, they're entitled. Narcissists actually believe they deserve sex and have a right to demand it whenever they want, even if you're sleeping, working, or occupied with something else, even something critically important, 
Maybe you've just given birth to a child or had surgery, or maybe you're sick. It doesn't matter. If the narcissist wants it, as far as they're concerned, they're entitled to it. They expect sex on demand. They especially expect sex in return for gifts, favors, or anything else they deem to have done for you. And if necessary, they're perfectly willing to trick, deceive, manipulate, guilt trip, and coerce you into having sex with them on their timeline. It's a game for them. It's all about their own gratification with little to no consideration for your comfort your wants, your needs, desires, wishes, or your well-being for that matter. And if you dare assert a boundary or express a need, they'll do and say whatever it takes to make you feel bad for having done so. They may even go so far as to tell you that you're the one who's selfish if you don't give in to their demands. Nice people. Number 12, they enjoy demeaning you. Narcissists are condescending, mean, and often cruel. They'll criticize, diminish, demean, and devalue you with zero restraint, regret, or remorse. They'll go out of their way, both passively and aggressively, to show you just how insignificant and inferior you are. And they'll usually do this by ignoring or ghosting you altogether, often when you least expect it you know, for maximum impact. And last but not least, number 13, they display signs of sex addiction. Now, sex addiction is a big topic and beyond the scope of this video. And obviously, not all narcissists are sex addicts, but a lot are. Suffice to say, some of the classic signs of sex addiction are, for example, engaging in sexual acts with multiple partners, in other words, cheating, or wanting to bring others into the dynamic and sanctity of your relationship. They'll minimize and be dismissive of the obvious risks of their promiscuous behavior, like for example, their infidelity or their obsession with watching porn while simultaneously having less and less interest in you. And like any active addict in their addiction, they'll be fully unwilling to discuss the problem and will likely become angry when you try to broach the subject. And guess who will be to blame for all of it? You guessed it, you. I promise you, if this is going on in your relationship, you are not the issue. Get the support and guidance that you need in order to be able to take care of and protect yourself on every level, no matter what is going on with the narcissist. Give yourself a gift, you deserve it. And it's time now. And with that, I'm gonna call it a wrap. But before I go, how can Tammy M Coaching help you? Well, four ways. Number one, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to make sure you get my new video every Friday. Number two, watch the free web class by clicking on the link in the description below. You'll learn about my personal journey and professional experience through decades of research specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. You'll also learn about some powerful strategies that you can begin to use today. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, and you'd like to be supported by a stellar community of like-minded people who are actually focused on solutions that actually work, you can learn more about my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, by going to www.tammymcoaching.com and clicking on programs and reviews for all the details. And number four, if you want some help right now, because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you wanna break free from painful relationship patterns permanently and actually make lasting progress in your healing and recovery, go to TammyMCoaching.com and click on apply now to learn how you can become my client.